name is Dana Castro and I'm the laboratory manager here at Brookhaven Instruments. In this video, I will discuss membranes and how we can use our surface data potential technology to measure the charge on them. First, I'd like to start with some background information. Polymeric based membranes are typically made to handle a variety of challenging filtration applications, such as dead end and cross flow filtration of proteins, vaccines, and biopharmaceuticals, as well as use in the food, dairy, and beverage filtration applications. Sometimes the membrane itself is also either positively or negatively charged in order to provide performance enhancements, such as increasing the selectivity of a protein to be retained. This is widely used in the filtration industry to fractionate proteins. For example, by adding a positive charge to an ultrafiltration membrane and adjusting the solution pH, it is possible to retain more positively charged proteins while allowing the proteins with little or no charge to pass through the membrane. Thus, the pore size of the membrane itself, coupled with the charge on the membrane, can be used to selectively increase the yield of a charged molecule well beyond what the pore size itself can pass through. This is because the charge on the membrane surface acts to repel molecules of the same charge that approach its surface. Many filtration membrane manufacturers sell positively or negatively charged membranes, but the customer does not actually know the actual magnitude of the positive or negative charge. Knowing the actual value of the surface charge on your charged membranes can be very useful because it can help you estimate the membrane's performance in increasing selectivity of charged proteins you may be filtering. It is also very useful in comparing the relative charge strengths of filtration membranes during your evaluation process for selecting which membrane supplier would be best for your application. In this application video, we will demonstrate how easy it is to measure the charge of your filtration membranes using Brookhaven's new surface data potential electrode. Check out our surface data potential intro video to learn the basics about the measurement and the electrode. In the first example, we show how to measure surface data potential on a positively charged membrane we purchased from a well-known membrane supplier. To prepare for any surface data potential measurement, you must cut a sample of interest to size. The dimensions of what we call the substrate are 9 millimeters by 4.5 millimeters. For something like a membrane or film, this is one method to follow. Start with a clean, dry surface, free of anything that may contaminate your sample. Make sure to be wearing gloves as well. Make sure the substrate is clean. Take the adhesive, here I am using a double-sided silicone tape, and attach to the substrate, minimizing the exposure the adhesive experiences. Since the other side of the silicone tape is protected by paper, the tape can be cut to size most easily using a razor. Next, have your sample ready. Place it onto your clean surface. Then, remove the protective paper from the tape and firmly press down the substrate onto the surface. Now you can proceed with cutting it to size. Try to make sure all edges are clean. This leaves you with a perfectly sized piece of your sample. And now to rid the sample of any dust or impurities, rinse with deionized water prior to measurement. We can then mount our sample onto the electrode assembly for measurement. Insert the substrate onto the movable arm. Then screw in the included screw until tight and flush against the substrate. Before beginning the measurement is to submerge the assembly into the chosen probe particle solution. This solution's reaction to the surface is what's being measured and makes it very important to choose carefully and correctly. If the sample of interest is negatively charged, one would use a negatively charged probe particle solution. 
This is so that no particles will stick to the surface and alter its original charge. Likewise, one would use a positively charged probe particle solution for a positively charged surface. The probe particle solution chosen should have a magnitude of at least 40 millivolts and be stable over time as multiple measurements will be made of this solution. This sample is a positively charged membrane, so I will submerge the electrode assembly in a positively charged probe particle solution, making sure there are no bubbles. Now we are ready for measurement. We can insert the assembly into the Nanobrook Omni, making sure that these side wings are firmly secured over the screws inside the instrument. From the front end of the software, select New Surface Data Potential Measurement. A measurement window will pop up where we can edit details about our sample, such as a name, ID, sample preparation, and so on. Under the Parameters and Time-Dependent branches, we can select how many measurements will be done at each displacement and for how many cycles. At minimum, we suggest three measurements of 20 cycles each to see repeatability. Once the SOP is completed, we can select OK and begin the measurement by pressing Start. The first task is to find a zero point. What that means is we want to find when the surface is just at the trajectory of the laser beam inside of the instrument where it's halfway blocking its path. To do so, we follow the on-screen instructions that tell us first to make sure the sample is fully above the laser path. We can then turn the wheel clockwise a few turns to make sure. Let this count rate stabilize for as long as you'd like, but at least one minute so a reliable average count rate is obtained. Then press OK. The next step is to lower the sample down until the count rate is essentially zero. The whole path of the laser beam is blocked. We do this by turning counterclockwise until we see the count rate drop dramatically. Once we've completed that step, click OK, and we will raise the sample up one more time until approximately half of the original count rate is reached. Let this stabilize for at least a minute as well. Once you are confident that the zero point has been reached, we can press OK and follow the instructions for beginning the measurement. We will move away from our zero point by 100 microns by turning the wheel five clicks and clicking OK. Zeta potential measurements at this displacement will begin automatically. Once the specified number of measurements at this displacement is completed, a window will appear for you to move to the next displacement, 200 microns, and so on. Once measurements at four displacements have been made, you have the option to keep measuring at further displacements of your choice in increments of 20 microns. Once the zeta potential begins to level off, that's a telltale sign that the measurement is complete. You would expect the zeta potential to begin to plateau at the value of the zeta potential of the probe particle solution you are using. From there, all of the data is saved and the surface zeta potential is extrapolated from the linear relationship of zeta potential versus displacement. If there are any outliers at any displacements, you can easily take them out of the calculation by unchecking the box here. Our results have shown a positive zeta potential of 31.81 millivolts with a nice repeatability at each displacement. To prepare for another measurement of a different sample, just rinse the electrode assembly thoroughly and remove the substrate and adhesive and also rinse thoroughly. Then proceed with the original steps for sample mounting. We have a negatively charged membrane from the same supplier and completing this measurement sequence and fast forwarding to the results, we can see a surface zeta potential of negative 26.42 millivolts with good repeatability at each displacement. As you can see, the membranes show an excellent linear fit to give you the surface charge for each of these membranes. I hope you've seen how easy it is to measure the charge on a surface with our new surface data potential electrode in conjunction with the Nanobrook Omni. Stay tuned for more videos where we explore various applications with our instrumentation. Thanks for watching!